Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is November 13th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. This is our current storm system. Lots of cold air aloft. Thunderstorms for the coastal regions. Here's some heavy rain across the area. We had some gusty winds. And you can still see we have some of that activity still to go through as we go through tonight and on in through tomorrow morning. Then we've got a very cold system that's going to move across the Gulf of Alaska and rush into the Pacific Northwest as we go through the upcoming weekend. More on that as we go through the video here this evening taking a look at the thunderstorm potential and again mainly for the coastal areas here as we go through tonight and on in through tomorrow morning maybe a little bit there but not too big of a deal there were th some thunderstorms today there were even some uh, special weather statements out for the potential for some water spout here i didn't hear any reports on that i was out there chasing one but it didn't get close enough to the coastline for me to be able to see that but we have had some gusty winds across the region and plenty of heavy rain as well. Seems like there was a lot of ponding across the metro area when I was out driving around here today. Now, taking a look at the North American model, this is the high resolution model. And this, again, is for tonight. You can see you get these breaks, and then you get some of this heavier rain moving over the area. And again, you can't roll out a lightning strike for some of the coastal regions as well. So as we scroll on in through tomorrow morning, you'll see you start to get a break here across the Puget Sound. It's still some showers going on as we go through the day tomorrow for the Willamette Valley, but not not as numerous as what was going on today. And then by the time we go towards Friday morning, we're really getting a break from that system. If we scroll far enough out though, you can see the precipitation from the next system rolling in this weekend. Now, I did want to show this here really quick. This scrolls through uh, basically the entire storm sequence there. And as we went through today, you can see all these numerous showers. And uh, as we go through this evening, you can still see we have some plentiful showers right off the Washington coastline. And again, can't roll out a thunderstorm with some of that. Now, heads up. We do have some elevated wave conditions out there. We are dealing with the increased tides because of the king tides. Tomorrow, we're going to be at 9.6. We're going to peak on the 15th, 16th, and 17th there, but the tides are going to remain elevated here as we go through about November 20th. And it's a good thing we're going to get a little bit of a break when we're not lining up any huge storm uh, during this time frame, but there's still just enough wind where it can become a problem. And what are the king tides? Well, you see the sun and the moon, they're lined up. They give that extra little tug on the Earth's ocean ocean and it gives that tide a little bit of a higher reach and so when you add winds and waves to that activity it can easily swamp parking lots and roads and cause coastal flooding now looking at what the winds brought since midnight last night olympia 52 not bad eating cloth 50 40 for west seattle only 31 for sea tack here that's not very noteworthy at all and we have this one for puyallup at 40 miles per hour and I, I did want to show up across uh, some of what you know, straight at Georgia 59. We had some strong gusts across the San Juans. 53, it looks like, would be island. And uh, some gusty winds here on some of the, let's see if I scroll in a bit further here. Let's go up to the, the new Dungeness Lighthouse, 54 miles per hour. So not bad. And if we take a look down a little bit further um, south, you can see Hoquiam, 68 miles per hour. What a powerful gust that was. 57 there, Long Beach, looks like 51 for a story. We had some mid-50s on some of the Oregon coast and some mid-40s for the Willamette Valley. Uh, you know, not a bad windstorm here, but definitely not the region-wide big windstorms that we can occasionally get. Now let's back this up because this is where we are right about now. Still some increased wave activity as we go through tonight, but that is coming to wane a little bit but not for long. And I shouldn't even really say that here because we do have another little bump moving through tomorrow morning and the high tide is right about here. So we could still be dealing with some issues at the coast and kind of teaming up with some of the king tide activity. And then we start to wane as we go through Thursday and Friday and Saturday looks like a pretty good break before we start to increase some of that wave action again as we go through the 17th and then maybe a little bit more here as we go through Monday on the 18th with the arrival of our next system. Now, Back this all the way up. This is at 18,000 feet. Washington State is here. There's the state of Alaska. Here's the Gulf of Alaska. This is the very cold air aloft associated with the storm currently. But if you think that one is cold, watch this one come racing across the Gulf of Alaska as we go through the day Saturday. Look at this polar lobe just taking a sledgehammer here to the Pacific Northwest. Very cold air aloft. That's going to bring some mountain snows. And I know you're probably seeing it on some of your smartphone apps, but you're probably seeing some of the snowflakes mixing in in your forecast here. Take that with a grain of salt for sure. But there's a little bit something to that here. With this very cold air aloft, some areas may be favored, especially in some higher hilltops, to see a few flakes mixing in. And I'll show you more on that here in a bit. 
But if we take a look at the Storm Prediction Center, this basically goes for tonight and tomorrow. Uh, thunderstorms mainly confined to the coastal areas. So let's take a look at what is to come. First, this is the storm with us currently. We're going to scroll through here. You can see the showers on the wane as we go through tomorrow and tomorrow evening. Bit of a break here on Friday and Saturday, but quickly precipitation returns Saturday morning for Western BC. Vancouver Island approaches the Washington coast as we go through Saturday afternoon. Another strong frontal system and again, lots of cold air aloft. Pretty heavy precipitation with that front across some of the areas, even though there's probably going to be some rain shadowing, but still some very heavy amounts with that storm system and the mountain snows are going to be piling up here as well and then we dig uh, a pretty deep trough out over the Gulf of Alaska and the Pacific Ocean and we kind of changed the pattern up a bit through the extent of forecast models have been continuously showing that we'll probably go over that in a little bit more detail tomorrow morning so what we're looking at here is 24 hours snow this basically is the Kuchera ratio, which takes into account the temperature in the lower portions of the atmosphere. It tries to give you a better snow uh, precipitation to, uh, snow ratio. So as we go through this weekend, you can see we start to pile up a little bit of snow. And if we scroll off towards a Monday, look at that snow Snoqualmie Pass. You know, getting, those aren't bad amounts there. So that could be sticking on I-90. And if you look across the foothills, See some of these lower snow levels starting to show up there? That is why you're seeing those snowflakes on some of your smartphone apps. You can see it across Spokane and some of eastern Washington as well. So a lot of cold air aloft. If things end up being favorable and some convergent zone activity here, you might see a few flakes on the higher hilltops. If we take a look at places like Payne Field, this is Everett. Take a look at some of the ensembles. They do show some light amounts of snowfall. And again, the ground is almost certainly going to be too warm for this to be sticking, but it can make for kind of an interesting sight to see some of those flakes fly in the air. And especially once you get towards the higher terrain, if we look down towards Kelso, it shows some snowfall here also, but throw this out. So, you know, you're not going to get probably snowfall down on in towards the sea level areas and things like that, or even down into the metropolitan areas, you're not gonna get snow accumulating and being disruptive, but you might see some flakes flying and you probably don't have to go high up into the higher terrain to start to get some of that accumulating snowfall. So it will be noteworthy, but I don't want you thinking that you're going to get snow on I-5 or something like that. That is not what this setup is going to bring. Now, if we take a look at Spokane International Airport, and again, the ground's probably a little bit too warm here, but we could see some flakes flying as we go through this weekend coming up. And we'll be going over this in more detail here over the next few days as well. So take a look at Vancouver. You can see it showing up in the ensembles. Look at Portland International. It shows up there. So that's why you're seeing it in your smartphone apps. Snoqualmie Pass. Again, about 3,000 feet Snoqualmie Pass. So a lot of times when Stephen's getting snow early in the year, Snoqualmie Pass is a little bit too low, but this one is going to have enough cold air aloft that it will be bringing some measurable snowfall, especially as we go through this weekend to even Snoqualmie Pass. Here's Stevens, nice shot of snow incoming as we go through the weekend here. Now, 6 to 10 day. Uh, near normal, they're probably broad brushing things a little bit here because we're going to change the pattern. We're going to dig this big trough out over the Pacific Ocean. So we'll see what is yet to come, and we'll break that down again over the next couple of days. Here's the 6 to 10 day. We even got some below normal signal here, so who knows. Now, what else? Um, yeah, didn't sleep that much last night. If you joined the live stream, I was up till probably about 1.30. It's hard for me to sleep on a bad hotel bed like what I was dealing with yesterday. So didn't get much sleep, Little running on a little bit of uh, low sleep. And I had a tire blowout today, so and I limped back to the Les Schwab, but my car's there. And then I walked three miles home after that. So that was fun. But anyway, I, I guess it could have been worse. At least I was able to get back up to Les Schwab. Had my dog with me, so the dog enjoyed the walk also. But anyway, thanks everybody for stopping by yesterday and this morning in the live streams. Hope you enjoyed some of that wave action and watching that wind gust. But anyway, um, I'll be doing my normal briefing as regular tomorrow morning. Hope you guys are having a good night and we will talk again then.